Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs here. Today we're going to be looking at these Arctic water coolers and see basically what the performance difference is, or should I say the cooling difference is, between let's say the smallest one and the largest one and all the different sizes between. And if you should spend a little bit more on the top end one, or if actually the smallest one would be the one what's fine for you. If you're interested in any of these water coolers, make sure you click the links in the description and it'll take you to the cheapest price available in your country online. And thanks again for supporting Tech for Tax. Before we go on to the main video, if you would do us a favour, click that like button, subscribe, click the bell as well, and that way you'll get notifications of new videos and live streams we do. Again, doing all these things helps support the channel, and helping to support the channel allows us to release more videos, better quality videos, and more content exclusively just for you. Okay, so down to testing. All testing was done on the same machine. The only difference between the machine is obviously when we change the water cooler itself. All fan speeds were set at either 50% or 100%. We don't use auto mode because obviously auto mode will adjust these fan speeds automatically to cool it down more if the machine gets hotter. So we use set speeds when doing testing. The specifications for the machine are in the description below, but in basics we use the 10700KF i7 Intel processor. The only things we changed on each test was the water cooler itself, as well as the thermal paste, and we, our thermal paste of choice was Arctic MX5 Thermal Compound. Okay, in this first test, we are checking the idle temperature. That's when the machine basically just sits there, does nothing, and this is the average temperature over 30 minutes, with a fan running at 50% speed. The temperature is in degrees Celsius, and the room temperature, as on all tests, is 18.5 degrees Celsius. As you can see here, the Intel stock cooler is quite a bit warmer than the water coolers, but between the water coolers, there is very little between them. Okay, in this test, we ran the processor as basically hard as we could. It was working at 100% load for 30 minutes altogether. The Intel stock cooler you would normally get with a cooler ran at 94 degrees Celsius, so pretty hot. And then you've got your water coolers ranging between 63 and 52 degrees. The bigger you go, obviously, the cooler it is. But we're tending to find that average of cost performance ratio seems to be around about 280 to 360 millimeter in this next test we do basically the same thing but this time we run the fan flat out so it cools it as well as it possibly can the intel stock cooler still getting at roughly 81 degrees celsius and the water cooler is anywhere between 61 and 50 degrees and again we're sort of finding it leveling out at around about 280 to 360 millimeters in this test we overclocked the processor to 5.1 gigahertz which not only makes the processor and the computer faster it also makes the processor a lot hotter because of more voltage going through it the Intel stock cooler failed the testing because it caused the machine to crash, or if it wasn't crashing, it would make the processor run a lot slower than it should because it was overheating. Though all the water coolers passed the testing, we found that 120mm Liquid Freezer 2 got 79 degrees Celsius, going all the way down to 64 degrees on the 420 millimeter. Again, we're finding that 280 millimeter slash 360 millimeter cooler seems to be the optimal performer. But if you're wanting the best of the best, well, obviously the 420 millimeter one is the, well, king of the road or what, or king of the water coolers or whatever you want to call it because it does outperform the others by up to 15 degrees Celsius. 
The only problem with the 420mm version that it doesn't fit most cases on the market and there's not many cases you can fit such a large radiator in but if you can well then it's definitely the one you want if you want the best of the best. There was roughly a 15 degree difference between the top end and bottom end water cooler. When I say top and bottom, I mean the largest and smallest. So obviously if you go for the biggest, it will cool better, make your machine last longer potentially, and maybe even allow you to overclock even more because of the lower temperatures. So what water cooler should I use for what processor? Well, obviously it's always a hard one to say this because different variations, obviously you have an i3, some are faster than others, some are newer, some are older and so forth. But I'm just gonna give you a rough idea. The 120 mil version, to be honest with you, I would only use that on a low end processor, maybe an i3, I'm really pushing uh, an i5 in all honesty. In a lot of cases you will find some actual air coolers perform better than the 120 millimeter water cooler now the other sizes so the mid end so let's just say the 280 and the 360 that's going to be ideal for anything from an i5 and upwards and if you really want them to push something like an i9 processor or the latest top end ryzen processor then i would suggest you definitely go for the 280 the 360 or even the 420 if you've got a case what will actually allow it and again Obviously, the cooler you can get it, the better it's going to run and potentially the longer it's going to last you. So you may be asking, why are we using Arctic Liquid Freezer 2s rather than any other manufacturer? Well, Arctic Freezers or the Liquid Freezers are some of my favourite water coolers, if not favourite water cooler on the market. They perform really really well for a really good price it's basically you're buying a performance model at a very good price if you was compare it to a car okay not everyone's a fan of different brands and stuff i would say it's a mustang it's no frills attached but you got pure performance at a decent price you could go out and buy something like the NZXT Z53, which has got an LCD display on it and stuff like that, and other models which have got nice RGB lighting and stuff. But you can pay up to around about £300 for a 240mm water cooler. Well, the 420mm version of the Arctic water cooler is just over £100. And obviously, the smaller you go the even cheaper and better value for money they are. Personally, if I was going to build a standard gaming machine, I would try and go for at least the 280 320mm version. But again, if it's a little bit more compact and you haven't got the room, then a 240mm water cooler would do the job with ease. Again, this is not a review of the water coolers, it's just showing you the different performances between different sizes. If you want to see a review of this cooler, which we did award it very highly a couple of years ago, feel free to have a look at the links at the end of this video. Thank you for watching this video everyone, it's really appreciated you made it all the way to the end. Please make sure you subscribe, like, comment and even click that bell so you get notifications of new videos and live streams. It does help support the channel and supporting the channel basically means that we can release more content for you and also better quality content going forward. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.